Uh, hi guys, and uh, welcome to my review of uh, oh, uh, Doctor Who, The Enemy of the World. I have been meaning to do this review for quite some time now, so uh, I thought I'd better just get it done. Like, I've really been procrastinating quite a bit on this one. But uh, So, The Enemy of the World, I'll take off the slipcase there. Um, so yeah, this is a... I'm going to always get the dates wrong. Yeah, it was 19... Okay, it's because before I said it was in, from 1967 and it was broadcast from 67 through into 68. Anyway, The Enemy of the World is a six-part Doctor Who story and it was first broadcast uh, yeah, between December 67 and January 68 and it has been missing uh, for the last, well, what was that, over 45 years now. It hasn't been seen since it was originally broadcast. Uh, at that time. It's one of what has become known as the missing episodes. There are many, many missing episodes from 1960s Doctor Who, as I'm sure many of you watching will already know. So, this was discovered by uh, episode Hunter Philip Morris and the team at TIEA um, at some point, we don't know when, but it was returned last year and it was announced by the BBC to have been recovered uh, in October, along with uh, the Web of Fear serial as well. And it was released on iTunes and then promptly released on DVD the following November. So a big deal, a hell of a big deal. Um, and uh, it's caused this story to receive something of a reappraisal uh, because it's always been uh, one that's sort of been slightly underrated. It was, it's sort of the odd one out of the season. It's not the same base under siege uh, formula. It doesn't have any monsters in it. So it's kind of unlike the rest of season uh, seven. Uh, seven, what am I talking about? Season five. And uh, uh, yeah, so it's a sort of an odd one out. And I think you don't get a lot of what the story's. Uh, uh, it's, uh, from the reconstructions and the audio, you're missing out on a lot of what the story has to offer. So being able to see it um, in its full glory is uh, is a real a real treat for fans, and certainly uh, uh, certainly a real treat for me. So I mean, this is I'm doing this review a long time after I've watched it. So of course I've forgotten a great deal of what I had to say about it um, now. But it's a six part story. The Doctor and their, his companions, Jamie and Victoria. Um, land on a beach in Australia or Australasia in some point in the future and uh, uncover a plot by a ruthless dictator named Salamander who is also played by Patrick Troughton to essentially uh, rule the world and uh, it is a awesome sort of espionage James Bond-esque story um, it's really fantastic stuff um, so it's difficult to know where to start my review of it I mean one uh, what I'll say right uh, off the bat is that this is Patrick Troughton's uh, one of his finest hours. It really showcases his brilliant um, acting um, and his performance because he's playing multiple roles here. He's playing the Doctor, he's playing Salamander, he's playing the Doctor pretending to be Salamander and he's playing Salamander pretending to be a post-apocalyptic uh, sort of nuclear holocaust survivor. Um, so he's playing four roles essentially. So. Um, and he, he's amazing in it. He's, he's absolutely amazing. And a Salamander is a fantastic character, a great villain. That's what really helps make the story so interesting. Uh, the first episode, this is, uh, is really, you just get straight into it. It is brilliant. Uh, they land on the beach. The Doctor has a little chuckle, goes for a swim. It's so wonderful. Uh, all the stuff you would never get from the recon, from the audio. Great direction by Barry Letts in his debut Doctor Who story as director. Uh, you get a big chase sequence and... I really enjoyed the early episodes the most. Um, you know, there are little bits of padding that I didn't mind too much. That I, it's obvious padding, but I thought it was actually a nice little character scenes like the the uh, part where I think Jimmy and Victoria are in the kitchen at Salamander's house and they're talking to the cook. Uh, all that stuff was, was great. Um, you've got some wonderful uh, stuff for Jamie to do, particularly I thought Jamie, uh, he was having a great laugh, Razor Hines, in some of these early episodes. And uh, yeah, the early ones, the first few, maybe three or four episodes, really, really good, really great stuff. Um, there's some really nice, uh, great supporting characters in this one as well. Um, you have, uh, a lot of people sound out uh, Mary Peach as the character of Astrid, who's kind of an Emma Peel type action girl, as, you know, a great character in this one. And I think she was she was very good, but I preferred the character of Faria, uh, 
uh, Salamander's assistant, who I thought she was more interesting, and I really thought it was a real shame she didn't survive the story uh, and was uh, was gunned down. I thought she was a great character. There are loads of great characters in this. Unfortunately, I've forgotten the name of uh, the character that Milton John plays, the security the security guy, I've forgotten his name. He's such a piece of shit in this story. I mean, really, it's Milton Johns is perfect to play that role. Um, and he also plays Guy Crayford in the Android Invasion and uh, Castellan in the Invasion of Time. And um, yeah, he's just such a bastard. I mean, he really is a piece of crap. One of my one of the scenes I really loved in this was um, what I thought was so of the time. You because you can tell they're going for a more serious approach with the story. As I said, it's more espionage. It's a little bit more realistic, and it's not like your Doctor Who of the period. And so, but there's only so far they can go with that. So whilst they do show some violence and some deaths, a little bit of blood, there's only so much you can do with that. So one of the scenes I really loved was when uh, Milton Johns confronts Giles Kent in his caravan when he's set up near the base and he's trying to intimidate him and of course if this was made now or was a different maybe a film um, what, what would have happened would have would, was obvious that he was going to interrogate him he would have tortured him you know and it would have been a sort of horrible tor a torture sequence um, but they can't do that in this what is ostensibly kids television from the 1960s certainly family friendly viewing so <laughs> to to show what a badass he is and how hardcore he fucking is he smashes up a few of his plates and his crockery from his little kitchen in his caravan and Giles Ken is it's a fucking it's absolutely hilarious and then the doctor comes along and Giles Ken is like you know, mortified, and he's saying to the doctor, "Do you see the kind of people we're dealing with? Look at, look at this. He smashed up my crockery." <laughs> I just thought it was brilliant. It just so, like, oh, he's so evil. Uh, <laughs> it was really, really great stuff. And uh, so you've got a great little supporting cast in here. Just some wonderful moments like that. O odd moments like the siege on Giles Kent's office with the woman with the pram, but it doesn't even look like a woman. It looks like a man dressed up with a woman, running by with a pram. It's just really weird and it's, it's so random. So because you're getting to see the story properly now, you get to see some of these things that you never got to see through the photos and stuff. Uh, for example, that, that scene and uh, uh, when Salamander first goes down into his underground base in his little uh, lift thing, uh, you, you got to see all the model work in that, which was, was awesome. So there is a lot to love here. As I said, Patrick Troughton's performance is the real standout. So it starts off really well. Um, I think the only issue I have with Enemy of the World is that it just, you know, as a, a lot of these six part stories from around this, this time, I have the problem. Uh, it sort of sags a little bit um, part way through and it's a bit more noticeable than some other stories. and. It's because it start, It goes so well for a while, but when you get to the latter half of the story, and um, it suddenly just goes downhill a little bit because as soon as, because the when when Salamander goes down to the base, basically, uh, it does it starts to fall apart just a little bit because it just doesn't really make a huge amount of sense. So Salamander knows the Doctor's impersonating him, and all that's going on. So he just disappears conveniently and goes down to that base for the whole latter half of the story while the Doctor's doing that. It just didn't make any real sense, and the survivors the who, who that uh, Salamander's got working for him down in the base are, are really a really wet bunch and not interesting and not very good at all. As soon as that happens, it becomes not so hot. I thought it was a real shame. I think if it was just a case of Salamander going into his cool underground base and it was like a James Bond movie and he's got all the people working at the stuff and he's like a, you know, just if it was just like that, I think it would work much better. But I think the whole sort of premise of the survivors and not knowing what Salamander's really about and he's pretending that there's a war going on. It just doesn't quite work and they're not interesting and it is it's sort of the story isn't quite as interesting there towards the end. So I think that last little part it, it, I wasn't as much of a fan, but it does very suddenly pick up right at the end with the final scenes where uh, the Doctor and his companions get back to the TARDIS and then Salamander follows them and confronts the Doctor. That's when suddenly the story gets a, a big, the viewer gets a big punch in the face after a couple of episodes where it's been a bit, uh, lost a bit of its momentum. It, suddenly it kicks in right in again and you've got a, a fantastic final confrontation with Salamander in the TARDIS control room, which is fucking epic. And the, again, the recon can't do justice to. And I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it, but it is an epic way to end the story. It was really, really great stuff. Um, so, um, 
I'm, I'm really, it's one I've got to rewatch all over again. I mean, it's just, it's, it's really good. I mean, it's, of course, at some point you, you can see where the budget can't quite stretch to meet the demands of the story. You know, it's unfortunate. It's something that would really benefit from just a little bit more of an injection of cash. It's a really great story going on here. And, but there's just some brilliant, brilliant stuff. Uh, a lot of it involving Salamander and the, and the Doctor. I mean, as I said, again, Troughton was just amazing in this. And uh, Salamander is just fantastic. I God, I wish they'd been able to bring him back again. He was a great villain. You really believe in this guy as a character, and he's got some great moments. And uh, it's a, a really, just a really, really well-made story. Barry Letts did a great job. The supporting cast having a great time. Jimmy and Victoria are really great in it. Victoria looks lovely. I must say, seeing her again as an adult, uh, I noticed more and more how really fucking hot she was, and uh, with a little skirt. Uh, anyway. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great story, a really great story. I know this is one that's, now because it's been recovered, it's jumped into a lot of fans, you know, top 10 or top 5 list for their favourite stories or favourite Troughton stories. Uh, I haven't quite gotten to that point where I'm being able to rate it up against the existing ones yet. Same with Web of Fear, uh, but I loved it. And I think, I think on the whole I like this a little more than Web of Fear, watching it again. Partly because this is actually complete and I, there's no missing episodes or anything. Uh, and partly just because it is so different from the other stuff in season five, which uh, you know is a, a little repetitive in terms of the you know, the formula which it follows. This is really stands alone in that series, and of course, being able to see uh, Troughton playing more than one role, just like Hartnell did in the massacre of Saint Bartholomew's Eve when he played the Doctor and he played the Abbot of Amboise, 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 Amboise. Um, yeah, it, that's always great, great stuff. So. Uh, yeah, I, this is a great, great story. It looks fantastic in DVD, you know. Even if you download it off iTunes, the DVD is really worth worth picking up. Like, uh, it's it's great stuff. I mean, it's bare bones, there's no extras, but it will be re-released re at some point. I have no doubt about that, but it's essential viewing for any Doctor Who fan. Of course, if you're a fan of the show and you haven't already bought this, it's got to be on your list right at the top. This and Web of Fear, they've got to be bought and they've got to be watched. It's classic stuff. Uh, Absolutely fantastic, and the restoration team did a great job of restoring it as well. It looks amazing. Because considering this has been sitting in the, you know, in Nigeria in some, you know, closet, uh, you know, uh, in God knows what kinds of temperatures for so many decades. It's amazing that it turned out as well as it did in terms of the, the, the quality of the print. It's, it looks looks great. So yeah, I have very little complaint about Web of Fear. Uh, as I said, minor uh, issues with the. Momentum of the piece part way through, but other than that, it's fantastic stuff, and you got to check it out. So I, I hope I covered all the bases with this review. I, I probably forgotten a lot now because I haven't really prepared for these, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm glad I finally got to actually say something about this. It was fantastic. So I only hope we get to see some more of these stories from this era, and more of them are recovered, and more from season five. It looks like that's what might happen, but we'll wait and see. In the meantime, we've got two fantastic stories that are being given back to us. Uh, and it's uh, it's a joy. This is this is heaven for me. Being able to sit and watch this stuff is just uh, it's heaven. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, next up, I'll be doing my Web of Fear review. Uh, so hope you can join me for that. And uh, catch you later.